الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد الحمد لله الله اكبر سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم الله اكبر it's a great نعمه to be a muslim a great blessing and favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala However, in being a Muslim, of course we face challenges and setbacks. And the shaitan will ever be haris in trying to distract you from the sirat al-mustaqim. And with being a Muslim, it requires that we know some of the basics. And often when I meet with my brothers and sisters and, and so forth in Islam. Sometimes we, we try to benefit each other with a hadith or some sort of reminder that will remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his verses, the Quran, something. And that is the brotherhood of Iman. But what I find sometimes with some of our brothers and sisters is because of they're seeing the importance of knowledge in Islam that they stumble on some of the most basic questions. For example, if you ask them, what's the most important thing that a Muslim should know? You know, what is the purpose of life? And they stumble and they look to, to the left and look to the right when they should automatically know it is Tawheed. It is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That is the assas of our religion. That's the foundation of our religion. Everything in the deen of Islam is built off of Tawheed, built off of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and built around that. If you're praying, you're praying because it's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's actualizing that. It's Tawheed al uluhiya That you're worshiping, it's Tawheed al ibadah That you're worshiping Allah alone. When you're seeking the knowledge, you're going on the path. Why? To learn how to better worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Re- lifting the jahil, the ignorance from yourself. And with the niyyah to lift the ignorance from others as well. And again... That's built on Tawheed. Why? Because it's all about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make the Hajj, all those uh, those rites of Hajj and pilgrimage, it's all about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all ta'zimillah. It's about raising up the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying Him and praising Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything, fasting, all those things are worship. They're for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ وَالْإِنسِ يَعْبُدُونَ I've not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Letting us know that our purpose that we're here is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point I wanted to, be, to make is that a Muslim should not be ignorant of those things. Nor should we struggle with trying to articulate that. Another important thing that I see sometimes our brothers and sisters, they stumble with. If you say, how many pillars of Islam, how many pillars of Iman, especially pillars of Iman. So we have to know, we should all try to know it in our language. If it's Indonesian, if it's English, whatever. Know the Hadith. Know the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala or Ibn Umar the hadith about the Arkan Arkan al Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Islam is built on five pillars. Just if you know that part of the hadith, you're going to remember the numbers. You're going to say, Islam has five pillars. 
Buni al Islam al Khams. Islam was built on five pillars. And then the pillars from there. And also in the hadith of Umar bin al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the hadith of Jibreel, which is a very long hadith, but if you can memorize something from it, that forms the, the basis of your religion. Because Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came in the form of a man with a beautiful white garment and he seemed as if he had traveled but there was no signs of traveling. You know, he was a man who, who came from traveling but there was no signs of traveling on him. You know, his clothes were exceedingly white and his hair was exceedingly black. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni al-Islam. He said, O Muhammad, tell me about Islam. So again, it makes clear for us, what are the pillars of Islam? We have to know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded by saying, Al-Islam and tashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa aqimu salat wa atiyu zakat wa sawm Ramadan wa hajj al-bayd in istata'ata ilayhi sabil. The Prophet ﷺ answered Jibreel ﷺ by saying, Islam is built on five. Or he said, وسلم, Islam, it is to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. ﷺ. And to establish the prayer, and pay the zakat, you know, pay the alms tax, fast the holy month of Ramadan, and make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca if one is able to do so. And Jibreel responded by saying, Sadaq, saying, you've spoken rightly. Right there, that makes ban for us the five pillars of Islam. So we should have no doubt, no Muslim should be asked that question and not know how many pillars of Islam? There are five. And to know those pillars, they should know them. That it is worship, that there's no God worthy of worship except the law, and that Muhammad is the last uh, messenger of Allah. And praying five times a day, fasting the holy month of Ramadan, paying the alms tax, which is zakat, and making the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca. Those are the five pillars of Islam. After that, Jibreel, uh, the, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were amazed. They were amazed at this. And they said, فَعَجَبْنَا لَهُ يَسْأَلَهُ يُسَدَّقُهُ And we were amazed that he would ask, and then he would say, that you've spoken rightly, meaning like as if he knew the answer. So that, that's kind of a strange thing. You ask someone a question and you already know the answer. Unless, of course, it was for to make, make clear to the people as a, as a means of teaching. Or unfortunately, some people ask questions as a means to test people. And there is an appropriate time to, make, to test people. But some people, they do it Alawaj al fasad, meaning they do it with a, a wicked intention in order to show up the person, in order to ridicule the person, in order to belittle the person, and that's that's not permissible. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam responded in that manner, you know, and said, you know, you've spoken rightly. And the Sahaba were amazed. Then he said, so this is the point here, is that we have to know the pillars of Iman as well. And we have to know that there's six. The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Al-Iman and tu'minu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyum al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. The Prophet ﷺ said that Iman, or faith, that it is to believe in Allah. 
to believe in his books, the divinely revealed books, the Quran, the Bible, the original text, the, the Psalms of David, the, the uh, Suhuf of Ibrahim, Wa Musa, the Torah. So it is to believe in Allah, it is to believe in His, his uh, and, to billahi wa malaikati, and to believe in the angels, that there are angels doing different jobs and, and, and they are under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kutubihi, the books that we've just mentioned. And wa rasulihi, and the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, that we believe in the prophets and messengers that Allah sent, all of them, even the ones we, we don't, we haven't heard of. We have iman that there were uh, messengers and prophets that existed that we don't know their names. We don't know the stories about them, but we know that they existed in general from the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and we believe in them. Khalas, just know that they existed and know that they were the best of mankind. That's sufficient. So, in tu'minu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasuli, so the messengers, uh, and believing in the day of judgment. So we believe that there's a day of judgment which will be held accountable for all the deeds we did in this life and judged whether to go to paradise or the hellfire and all the events that will lead up to it and all the events that will happen on that day. That may Allah protect us from the horrors of Yom, yom Qiyamah. And then the last pillar and tu'minu bi qadri khayri wa shar. And it's to believe in the divine destiny, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good of it and the evil of it. Meaning everything was created by Allah. And, and qadr has four levels, even though this is outside of what we're talking about, outside in the sense that I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, but it's also just for basic knowledge we have to know. The divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qadr, it has four arba maratib, it has four levels. Al-Khalq, that Allah created everything. Uh, Al-Mashiyah, that everything happens in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khalq wa Mashiyah, and uh, Ilm, that Allah has knowledge over everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He knows everything that happened, knows everything that will happen, knows everything that potentially could have happened, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last level out of the four, and that isn't necessarily the order, is that uh, we mentioned al-khalq, Mashiach, uh, khalq, that Allah created everything, al mashia that everything happens in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilm, knowledge, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything. And the last uh, level of the divine decree is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything in Allah al-Mahfud. So it's called Kitabah. So that everything has been written. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything that would, would happen in existence 50,000 years prior to the creation. And that's what we believe. We don't ask how. We don't ask why. We don't question that. But we have to sleem in the hearts that this is the truth. That it came from Allah. And it came from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we believe in that. So every Muslim must know the five pillars, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, the five pillars of Islam and the six pillars of Iman. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those people of the Mukhlaseen and those people who are on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.